as Brian mentioned, I'm, I'm Mark. This is Rich. Uh, and we are very passionate about network testing. Um, so uh, just some brief acknowledgments. Uh, we're going to talk about test vectors um, and, and some ideas like that. And there was a great talk last year by uh, Ali and Tomek from the Google team. So as opposed, instead of trying to, uh, every time we mention something, we just want to give some acknowledgments. Um, a lot of good work done last year. Very good talk. You know, it goes into a lot of depth around test vectors, and uh, also CD-Lang. Uh, so the problem statement, uh, it's a year later. I think it uh, certainly still applies. Um, Cost-efficient, rapid testing can use, continues to be a major challenge for network operators. Um, you know, vendor-specific testing is just not scalable, even on single box. Um, and then, you know, when you look at integration and solution testing, it just compounds the problems exponentially. So our goals, uh, you know, a couple of things. One, we're just we're looking to contribute to test vectors and the mission of vendor agnostic black box testing. Uh, we are also looking to expand the test vectors use cases to solution integration and multi box testing. Uh, and and then lastly, we are uh, looking to reduce cost, uh, improve quality and increase the speed of release by leveraging virtual testing. So as a quick review, uh, test vectors are a data structure that uh, represent a set of test cases and a topology. So you take your topology file, you take your uh, test case, which is defined as a set of operations, a set of external stimuli, and a set of expected behaviors. Um, and essentially, you, know, you can see the diagram. This is, this is from the Google guys here. Uh, you, you feed in your test vectors and your network model into a framework, and you have a device under test, and you have a traffic generator of some sort that is providing those external stimuli, and that's the, the very basic idea. Um, as Mark mentioned, we were looking to uh, make some contributions to the test vectors uh, ecosystem you know, around Stratum. Um, so we did a quick reference implementation in a framework. We just load the test vector. Uh, as you mentioned, it's not uh, topology unaware. You know, you have to have that topology information to help populate that, and then execute it by a replay agent. In addition to that, we have an existing traffic generator that's virtual and physical, and we made an adapter to leverage the test vector format of those uh, payloads, the packets, in raw byte format, and then play those through the topology. Yeah, and I'd say it kind of the last piece is the the virtual environment and, and being able to do some of this testing virtually, which we'll, we'll talk a little bit about. So this is, you know, uh, this is the testing pipeline, right? It's, it's this easy. You file the image, uh, you test that, then you go just do some, some nice uh, platform integration testing, smooth and easy. Uh, and then, you know, let's make sure we do a little solution integration, make sure our routing works, all those sorts of things. It's, it's very, very simple. That's why we're here. Very easy to say. So this is more like, this isn't exactly like testing, but this is more like testing. Uh, there's a lot of iterations at each, at each cycle. Um, you know, to be, to be perfectly more, ex or more exact, you'd probably say that, you know, every, t every time you go down and then you come back, you got to start all the, way, all the way at the beginning. You get the idea. There's a lot of iterations on testing. Um, the software image itself is obviously done um, virtually, and it is our... Uh, kind of thought that a portion and uh, potentially a significant portion of the platform testing and the solution testing can also be done virtually. All right, demo one. Okay, so um, with that introduction and idea in mind, um, we'll start with the classic uh, loopback situation. You know, a lot of those PTF demos and, and other demos start with that. So uh, we have highlighted some of the key parts of the test vector. Um, once you actually populate one, uh, the protobuf definition, it's far too large to put onto a slide deck. So this is just some human readable uh, uh, instructions to kind of give you an idea of what we're talking about. So first we start off by setting the control plane aspects. So whatever forwarding entries need to be placed into the table. And in addition to that, uh, our artifact from our loopback simple P4 program has to be loaded. And then uh, the part that is uh, focused in on, I guess, in this talk is the 
external stimuli aspect. So the packet that goes in and the expected packet on the return side. Um, in addition, we are subscribing to the GNMI interface to check things like uh, interface counters. In this case, we, we took the TV fabric switch from the old OpenFlow tests, um, and it's the same idea, but now with a uh, newer interface. Um, and again, uh, during the development cycle and, and just trying to get an idea of kind of what, uh, you know, formalize this in your head, you know, and sharing this with other team members, um, we added some of these debug statements. Again, these, this isn't the actual format. This is just like to help you understand like, hey, we don't have any uh, parallel action groups or random action groups. And if you go back and check out the other talk from the guys last year, um, they, they talk about each of these areas. But uh, we're using a sequential action group. It's the same as what we just described. And then we just have some debug output uh, because some of our P4 programs in development actually did not pass. Uh, so this was more of a tool for us, but hopefully it helps demonstrate kind of the order of operations that's happening here. Okay, so why change everything up? You know, everybody's been testing in this way and that way all these years, but um, I guess one of the biggest benefits um, when I think about it is this standard interface, like a northbound standard interface to get results and expected telemetry out of a box. Um, that's a powerful idea, and it's especially powerful when you can uh, do that across multiple vendors. In this case, um, we just have, you know, some some vendors you guys might recognize, as, as well as a stratum interface. We're using the exact same case across each of those, but with uh, just a different target in each iteration. Um, And I just wanted to highlight that, uh, I guess it's a little bit too far up at the screen. It is the exact same test case. Uh, and the only difference is like we're using a test vector generator at runtime, like the test vector generator idea, meaning that we have the test case templatized and we're filling in things like the target and that type of thing at execution. Um, and so we use the exact same template, replicated three times. And they each have different ports and that type of stuff. but. Uh, so that's the same demo, but multi-vendor. And then finally, something more uh, interesting. We took uh, just a random topology. I mean, there's there's no uh, Onos control here. It's just uh, something that looks a lot like the Onos trellis, trellis demos. And the idea here is to uh, expand upon this single box loopback functionality, um, meaning that in real life, we expect to have not only one box, but several boxes, and then several sites of several boxes. And so we are uh, trying to demonstrate the extensibility of A, having that original templated test vector, and then uh, in this particular case, multiple box. So we take the idea of, an, of a stimuli on ingress, let's say in the top left box, and I expect that packet to come out somewhere in the network, right? Um, so we'll see here in the next slide, I have a, uh, an image that we tried to get all on here, but kind of towards the top of that one, it says source and dest. And so instead of having just a single test vector try to accomplish all of these things, we just leverage two test vectors and like a tuple or a matrix, if you will. And uh, yeah. I don't know if the matrix is the right term, but in any case, it's just a pair of them where the source test vector has the information about the packet that's going to be sent, and the destination test vector has the information about the packet that's going to be received. Um, and same idea as before, very simple flow. Uh, we'll see here in a moment the results and visualization of that because the log got too long. And instead of, you know, handcrafting all of these flows like north, south, east, west, this side, that side, we just say, okay, well, we know the topology. We have the uh, expected ingress and egress packet based on the control plane settings that we put in. And so we just do a full mesh. Uh, we don't send to ourselves in this case, but that's what the gray boxes are across the line. Right, so that's baseline. Okay, so then um, let me actually go back one second to the 
just reference our topology again, uh, we're, we're just going to fail um, this link right here. And uh, in this tool that we're using to model this network, um, its purpose outside of this demonstration is to test networks and test failover and reachability. Um, and one of the triggers that it has available to it is an API that allows you to kill a link. Um, and so back to our first image. Uh, this was the first attempt at this test case. Um, when we failed that link, we had some non-converging traffic. Like, I guess something that we'll have to consider as we go forward with this strategy is, you know, how much control plane interaction are we going to allow between the source and the desk, and like when a trigger actually happens? And is it going to be the responsibility of a controller in the situation, in the scenario, to actually make that update, or are we going to, um, you know, have like backup or you know, like ECMP strategies? All those sorts of things I think will be specific to the topology and, and example, but in our case, we weren't really thinking about it, and so we had uh, you know, some flows that we're not able to get um, to like the full mesh at this point once we failed one link. Um, we improved upon it and got back to green, and then we did a box failure just to make sure that uh, we were getting true results uh, out of the system. And when we failed the first box, uh, all of those guys failed. So that was uh, good feedback. All right. So what I would like to impart uh, with, with poor grammar is that sum is good. So when we're looking at the spectrum virtualized testing, hardware testing, we all know you can't do everything virtually, obviously. You've got to do... You know, you've got to exercise the, the data plane. You've got to do those sorts of throughput testing, those sorts of things. But the more you, the further you move towards virtual, you uh, increase your velocity, release velocity, image velocity, version velocity, um, which for the operator business equates to top line revenue. They're looking to push in new features for new services. This is very important to them. Uh, at the same time, the further you go left, you're also reducing your cost. So just simply top line, bottom line, sum is good. And that's it. So I guess one, um, one thing that we would like to ask of the community and, and of folks here and what we're looking to gain out of this uh, experience is, you know, what are we not thinking about that's specific to your situations? Like, what is your testing uh, methodology, styles, needs today? And... Uh, if this is interesting to you, um, we would like to continue the conversation and, and talk about how we should structure our test uh, vector repositories. You know, like what should live in the stratum and be uh, single box based test vectors, and then where do we delineate and where do we store ones that are more of a solution based, and um, just all those types of questions. Um, and and like I said, if anybody is willing to share some example scenarios or uh, or testing needs they have today, we'd be more than happy to hear about them. If not, thank you. All right, thank you. Any questions? I still hear much. Questions? Okay. So I have, a, I have a question for you. Um, so the topology that you showed in your, your virtual environment, how is that modeled today? Um, you, you're talking to... Yeah, the more complex scenario. one. How do you describe the topology? Ah, uh, well, uh, like I mentioned, we have a tool that is for, um, you know, like legacy testing and, and uh, validation. And we have a topology JSON structure that's fairly similar to the uh, Onos uh, topology structure. But um, it's an interesting point. Something that I've been looking for is like a standardized, like Yang-based, here's what a topology consists of and here's how we describe it. Um, but to answer your question, it is a JSON structure, which is basically an L1 JSON structure. Now, one thing that we did have to do, uh, we had to make an addition to it for the flows because we wouldn't know which network or how to generate those uh, packet headers and then consequently the control plane operations without uh, pre-designating subnets or IPs. Um, so we actually made some changes to our our structure for that, but 
Uh, did that answer it? Yeah, no, I think so. And, and the follow-up to that is, so are you using your test vectors runner on each of these boxes? And if so, uh, are you using a static um, sort of s snapshot of a of flow state across all of the devices? Or um, how, how does the control plane uh, inter interface with the whole topology? Sure. Uh, that's a good point. I actually forgot to mention that as we were going through. Um, in every topology, there's two uh, nodes that sit out to the side. Um, one is a telemetry um, collector. I'm using the, um, the GNMI collector reference implementation. And then uh, in the bottom below that is the test vector replay. It's actually the server and the agent all in one. It's a uh, two container pod, um, just happens to be. Uh, and th I guess that's where everything initializes from, but we also leverage the fact that we have the topology file and it's uh, full disclosure Kubernetes on the back end and we use labels and things like that to help it do some uh, discovery. And then finally with the control plane aspect, uh, we are generating a packet based on those IPs that we talked about and then we're monitoring the telemetry for the counters of that packet and we're using traffic generators that are connected on every node for the uh, TX and RX um, aspect of that. I think kind of came back around. Maybe I, did I hit all the points in that question? OK, Thanks. awesome. Thanks. Other questions? So I have one more for you then. Okay. Um, <laughs> so the test vectors, uh, the, the test cases or templates that you described, um, how are those being created? Uh, those are by hand right now. Uh, just. We're taking like existing ca uh, cases from like the OpenFlow um, library and then just updating those. Uh, I would like to not do those by hand in the future, um, but I'm waiting until a presentation right after me to find out more about how I'm going to do that. Cool. Anything else? All right. Let's uh, thank our speakers. Yeah. Thanks.